Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Lolly. Thank you, Adam. Love the children's message about Jesus, who is the cornerstone and the rock. Did you know that Peter's name actually means rock? Did you know that his name was changed when he encountered Christ? His name originally was Simon, which simply means to hear or to listen to. When he met Jesus, he began to proclaim Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus looked at Peter and he said, from now on you will be called the rock. And upon this confession that could only have been revealed to you by God, I will build my church. It is the power of that Holy Spirit that we are following in our sermon series on the Holy Spirit in the early church. I want to apologize to our virtual community, our worshiping community that joins us online because we had some technical difficulties last week with the first sermon. I'm hoping that you will have an opportunity to watch that. But if you know, if you don't, just remember that today's sermon builds upon that story that's found in Acts chapter 3, where Peter, the rock, with John, go up to the church in Jerusalem, the temple, to worship. And there they encounter a man who was lame. His legs were broken. They didn't work. And how they did not offer the mandatory alms for the poor. But they said to him, what we do have we give you. And that is the word of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit at work through them, bringing healing to this man. Miraculously, the man's legs were healed and he goes into the temple, he goes into the church, dancing and celebrating the healing and the gift that God has given to him, the transformation of this man's life. You know, God is about transforming lives, and God has been doing that throughout the ages of his church. We find that in the early church, as we read here in Acts chapter 4. We also see that within our own Methodist denomination. Did you know that our denomination actually was birthed out of the Anglican Church in the 1700s? There was a family that, by the name of Wesley, and there were brothers, John and Charles, John the preacher, Charles the singer. And through a movement that happened in a university, the Methodist movement was born. It was John's desire that this Methodist movement be truly a movement within the larger Anglican church and that we never establish a church freestanding from the mother church. Yet we did. And as we look back to the splitting of this early church in Acts, we find that same movement at work there as well. You see, Christians who were Jews in the first century, their church was the temple in Jerusalem. They were Jewish Christians. In other words, as one of my professors used to say, if you want to be a good Christian, you ought to be a good Jew. You don't negate the laws of God, the foundation laws, if you will. But we also open ourselves up to the work of the Holy Spirit that Our God, who created all things, continues to create, continues to call us into new ways of doing things. We know this as a church that continues to emerge from the COVID pandemic. That early first century church, well, they attended to the act of going to the temple, yes. They followed the laws of God, yes. They lived a holy life by staying in unity with other Christian believers. And they held to the truth that Jesus is the Messiah, the God-made flesh, who was born of a woman, who lived and died and rose again, who ascended into heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit given to them at Pentecost, was still at work among God's people. So you wonder... Why were these early Christians such a threat to the Jews? One word, power. You see, it seems that as the people of God, we always struggle with power, don't we? 
and there comes a point in each of our lives where we have to surrender that power, our personal power, to God. The greatest danger, I believe, for any church, any denomination today, is when we try to hold on to church so tightly that we value buildings and programs and leaders and preachers over the proclamation and the power of God in Jesus Christ and God's kingdom work that is being done among us. Peter and John, practicing Jews who followed Christ's way and Christ's teachings, did not come into the Jerusalem church to tell the Jewish community how to worship. They came to worship with them, and it was the presence of the Holy Spirit at work that created hmm, a problem within the congregation. You see, this man had been healed, and they wanted to know by whose power and in what name that person had been healed. The Jewish leaders, they were educated. They lived in a community and in a world where there were other gods and other laws that were being practiced, other religions being practiced. And they knew that in those other religions that those gods had particular names. And to be able to know the name of that god was to be able to capture the power of that god. Names were fundamental characteristics of these gods. And if you could harness the power of that god... Well, you could control that God. And so they asked the question, in whose name was this man healed? They were asking, as they identified them, uneducated fishermen, Peter and John. And yet they found within them a great knowledge and a great wisdom. Because these men who stood before the highest Jewish council the Sanhedrin, understood that this God, Yahweh, whose name is I Am, was at work among them. 